Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I love my podcasting gig. <laughs> I've just been thinking about it the last little while, and I just, I've had such great conversations throughout my time here on the podcast, and I've um, met, and I know that's not quite the right word, but I've gotten to speak with a lot of really interesting people, um, a lot of really smart people, a lot of really funny people, a lot of really uh, just interesting and fascinating people who have taken the time to write books, and then they take the time to talk to me about those books. I am pretty darn lucky, and I am very grateful for that. And I'm grateful for you, too, because you have been along with me on this journey, and hopefully you have found some new authors to explore and support. I, I hope that for you as well as the authors. So today's interview is with author Danny Alpert. It is a memoir. Her book is a memoir called The Girlfriend Mom. After tap dancing through life as a child-free woman, Danny fell in love with a divorced dad of two and stepped into the amorphous role of a parent's live-in significant other or babysitter without compensation. Presented with a Whitman sampler of motherhood, she made rookie mistakes, like leaving the 11-year-old alone in the house while running to CVS for raisins and donating to the Alzheimer's Foundation as the kids' Christmas gifts. <laughs> Seven years in, Danny got her bearings and sunk deeper into her semi-parenting, surprising herself and those around her. She kept Nicole's teenage secrets, whistled while she laundered Tyler's athletic supporter, and anointed herself the girlfriend mom. And then she was dumped for a natural blonde. It wasn't a traditional divorce, and Danny had no visitation rights. But she and the kids wouldn't break up. And Danny went from keeping a guardedly warm distance to fighting for a place in their lives. That is the description of The Girlfriend Mom. And just that couple of paragraphs should tell you a lot. It should tell you that this book is written with a lot of humor. Uh, it's written with a lot of love. And I appreciated both of those things. What I really appreciated even more was Danny's presentation of a different kind of family. I mean, families, as we all know, come in so many different shapes and sizes these days. And there is this kind of what happens when you get divorced or you break up from someone who has children who from a previous relationship and then the ties to those children are lost. How does that work? What happens? You know, you've been in their life for however many years you were involved with their parent and suddenly you break up with their parent and where do you stand? Well, Danny decided that she wanted to stand, continue to stand in the lives of those children. And that's what she fought for. So we, as the readers, then get to experience her journey, her path to figuring out where her place in their life was, figuring out what they wanted, what she wanted, where those two things came together, how to deal with um, their their biological mother, of course, because, you you know, she needed to have a relationship with her. And now that dad was out of the picture, just so many different angles and elements that come into play when you're trying to figure out a situation that maybe you don't have a roadmap for. So it's told, like I said, with a lot of humor, with a lot of heart, with a lot of love. And I really appreciated this perspective on family uh, because there are so many different families. And I've always thought the more 
people that uh, children have in their lives who love them, how can that be a bad thing? So let's go ahead and turn now to the interview with Danny Alpert. Again, the book is a memoir. It is called The Girlfriend Mom. And let's get to the interview with Danny. Hi, Danny. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm very happy to have you. Uh, we are here to talk about your memoir. It's called The Girlfriend Mom. Before we get to the book, though, um, it would be fun to get to know you a little bit. Normally, I ask kind of a general question of, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, let's go a little more specific. Tell me where you grew up. I grew up in uh, in New York. I grew up in a small town um, now made famous by the Clintons in Chappaqua, New York. Um, typical suburban town. And then I moved, I uh, went to college in the city. And then I moved out to Seattle. And then I ended up in Los Angeles for about, I was there for about 16 years. But um, you've actually moved a bit more than that, right? I mean, because you lived internationally. I did. Oh, boy. Yeah. There were some mistakes along the way. <laughs> um, yeah. I decided to leave uh, Los Angeles and the entertainment business because I thought I was going to teach English as a foreign language. So I moved to Prague. And um turns out that... Uh, English is about as foreign to me as it is or it was to the Czech. So I quit that program after two weeks. <laughs> I, had oh, no wow. business. I had no business teaching grammar. Um, and I traveled around and then I found my way back to New York. <laughs> that, that, that sounds, I mean, good for you. <laughs> that's, a, that's a huge well, <laughs> It's called it's called ignorance and it's called uh, blind going going blind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, were you yes. referring to Dubai? From the book. Um. Well, if you want to talk about that, sure. Or um, there's oh, no, a mention no, no. of Nicaragua. Or oh gosh, you know, it's like I should really read the book. I don't even remember. <laughs> did I did I talk about Nicaragua? Yes. Okay. So. Um, because I don't, I'm not very good at learning lessons. Uh, when I got back from my uh, European travels, I um, fell in with a woman who was making movies, which is my background, with um, at-risk youth in Nicaragua. So I thought, wow, that's combining the two things that I love, which is filmmaking and travel, let's go do that and, and volunteering and, and doing, doing some good in the world. And, um, that lasted 12 hours. <laughs> I oh, arrived. Oh, wow. Even less than Prague, which was two weeks. Oh yes. No, I arrived. I got a look at the, um, bugs and I, uh, the woman that I was supposed to meet missed her flight. So I was in Managua all alone. And I just, I had one of Mary, many uh, breakdowns. And I just turned myself right around and uh, got back to New York. <laughs> well, at least, at least you always have New York to come back to. <laughs> I, as it turns out, yeah, this city's not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, so. Me. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think it would. Although it does in every apocalyptic book, it seems like New York seems to get destroyed. Yes, but it comes back bigger and stronger and faster. That's right. That's right. Well, you, your memoir is not about your um your travels. <laughs> it's no. about. Um, <laughs> can you give a brief a brief overview of the the book, The Girlfriend Mom? Yeah, sure. So I um met a man who was divorced, who had two kids and fell madly in love with him. And um, I never wanted kids. Uh, and I decided that the love was so strong that I would give it a shot. So we started dating and 
and eventually moved in together. And I was very hands off in the beginning. And then after over seven years, I just absolutely fell in love with the kids. And just as when I was getting my footing and feeling like I could do this mom thing, um, I was dumped. And so then I had to uh, figure out how I was going to stay in these kids' lives because I couldn't see myself just walking away. I mean, this was my family. So it's really the story of um, letting go of who we think we are and um, who we can be if we open our hearts a little bit. So that's what I did, and I let the kids in, and um, we have very strong relationships to this day. And there's a couple of follow-up questions that I want to to go with from that. So first of all, you say, you know, I never wanted to be a mom, and Mm -hmm. lots of people are going to either nod their heads, "Mm -hmm, sure, or gasp and clutch their pearls because, oh, my gosh, how could you not want to be a mom? (laughs) Well, I could... I could come back and say, how could you be a mom? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, there's, there's, you, there's a definite, it, like, expectation for women about motherhood. You know, yes. I think that in the year 2020, I find that to be um, not laughable, but just very close-minded when mm-hmm. we are experiencing so many different kinds of families, blended families, and, um, and, and then to get all up in somebody's business about how they want to live their life, I have pretty much zero patience for that. My feeling mm-hmm. is clean up your own backyard before you, go, before you go tracing into somebody else's. And I just have never come from the school of thought that motherhood defines a woman uh, and I think that there's also different kinds of mothering. So I didn't have mm-hmm. to pass a child uh, through my person, but I feel like I am as much a mother figure to these two kids and some, yeah. some aspects more so than their bi- biological mother. Yeah. I, I have a friend who, this was probably about 10 years ago, but still not that long. And her boss told her he thought she was selfish because she didn't have children. And that was the most selfish thing he thought she could do. And I was like, wow, people, seriously. Yeah, I think they, I think people need to get a grip. And if that's what they're focusing on, you know, telling, giving, getting, giving unsolicited opinions to, to other people's personal, so personal uh, choices. <clears throat> I, 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 I don't even know what, I don't know how to respond other than to say, look at all of the, look at families out there where um, women felt pressured or social by social norms or, or whatnot to have kids. And if you ask them and you really get their truthful answers, some will probably say that they regret their decision. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. there's just every different kind of people and motivations out there. So uh, I, I would never tell anyone not to have a child, but I don't, I, I expect the same respect in return. Right. You know, I think it's actually quite, uh, I don't know. I don't think selfish, I think selfish has such a, negative connotation. I look mm-hmm. at it as I knew myself so well that I knew that I, I, I didn't want to bring a child into this world and it wasn't something that I wanted. So would it have been better to have one because Jack at the office thinks that I <laughs> Because you have the equipment to actually create one? Right. Yeah. Right. So, and then I'll just be resentful my whole life. Oh, that would, who's going to benefit from that? Not the kids or you. No, I think, no, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, which actually segues into my other follow up question, and that is to talk about family, which we will do right after this first break. We'll come back and talk more about families and what families look like and what families look like that are different from other families. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast gives you advice on everything from hair to fashion to skincare products. We'll talk about the latest trends in makeup, hairstyles, and anti-aging remedies. And we'll cover all of the newest fashion trends. If you have an interest in or questions about the beauty trends that might work best for you, the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast has got you covered. Download the GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Before the break, I had said that I was going to segue into talking about family, and then I made you go to a break instead of proceeding with that segue. So I I apologize. Don't hate me. Um, And I also realized that people often tell me that I sound like I have an accent, and I don't get that. And then I hear myself say words like family, like I did at the end of the last segment. And I think, I don't know what that accent is, but that was a really weird pronunciation of the word family. Not the point. Let's go ahead and get back to the interview with Danny. You got to that point where you felt like you had this maternal role in their lives and then you broke up with your boyfriend. And even if you had been married, you know, still there's that, okay, now what? Because you're not their biological mother. You're no longer their stepmother or their girlfriend, mom, or their, you know, whatever title you go Mm -hmm. by. So that is... I mean, first of all, you you mentioned, you know, that that families are so diverse these days, but also then what do you do in that position where you have been part of someone's lives and now you really have no role? And that's a lot of what you talk about in the book. Yeah. I mean, I, I address almost all of that in the book and I guess I never saw it as I don't have a role any longer. I felt that I had put in my time, I had paid my dues, and I was going to get something out of this, <laughs> this relationship. And I just also felt like, how would this be fair to the kids? We were dependent on one another. We had been in each other's lives for over seven years. I think it would have been, who wants to be abandoned? I mean, they had already been through a divorce. And mm-hmm. now they're going to go through a breakup and okay, but how can I make this more, how could I make this a smoother transition? I mean, there was just, there were some moments short sure, during the whole process where I didn't, I wanted to walk away and my motivation wasn't always so magnanimous. Uh, you know, a part of it was, I'll show my ex, look how great I am, I'm going to stay in the kids' lives. But that didn't last long, because as we were navigating this new chapter, I got even closer to them. And it was a closeness that I wasn't really able to experience when I was with my ex, because, you know, the dad part was always looming like he was the parent what did I know how much can I say you can't really say all that much but now it was all about the three of us creating this new our new normal and did I answer your question oh my god I'm like babbling (laughs) no you're fine yes Oh my God, I I have COVID fog. I don't, <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't think you were babbling. I think you were explaining it well. Okay. How I did the process? <laughs> you, no, I, like I get it. You're, you're halfway through a sentence, and you're like, "Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where was I going with?" I'm this? like, I lost my, I lost the thread here. What? <laughs> <laughs> How did that process work then with not only your ex but also the the, the children's mother? Oh well, that was the 
most surprising element um, or result that came out of this whole experience because the um, because my ex's son was still young enough uh, that he was living with his mom and he didn't drive. So the only way that I could see him was to reach out to her. And we didn't really have that. We didn't have really, we really didn't have a relationship when um, I was with my ex. So that first phone call was really intense. Like we didn't know each other. And here I am asking her if I can visit her son. And she just wasn't like anything that I had seen on TV, which is always my my which has always been my role model um and we started having a uh friendly relationship the kids kind of brought us together but then since then we have socialized on our own i mean we had a lot in common which i never knew when we were when i was dating our ex <laughs> right right yeah and th- that i think is also not only have you kind of created this new concept of family, but you have worked out, you know, some people are friendly with their exes or with their exes, exes, (laughs) you know, that's another place where there's a lot of judgment and people would say things like, really? I can't, I get get it a lot as well. I mean, I'm I'm friends with um, the woman my husband was with for 15 years before he met me. And people are like, you're friends with her? What's wrong with you? Exactly. <laughs> What's wrong with you is that is nothing's wrong with you. It's right. you were fortunate as I was fortunate enough to have this woman who saw me loving her kids. Mm-hmm. And that's all she needed to see. That is all she needed to see. She saw how much I cared about them, how much I loved them. And listen, we had a, we had, we shared a lot of um, similar stories when it came to our ex. So we were bonded in that way. And so what's to be, um, what's the conflict there? I mean, if you get right down to it, um, I w- I provided a sounding board for her. I mean, she once said to me, uh, or referred to the fact, commented on the fact that um, we both, we, we co-parented her kids. Mm-hmm. And my ex had never said anything like that to me. He never wow. made me feel like I, I was co-parenting. And so to be validated by the mother, I mean, that's, that's pretty heavy. Yeah, absolutely. So what then inspired you to sit down and write this memoir? Oh, I had nothing else to do. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had some free time. Uh, I think break. I'll write a memoir today. Yeah, I got nothing better yeah, to do. Why, why not? Well, you know, I was um, I was going through this breakup, and uh, I am a writer, so it just made sense to me that I would get this get this story down. I felt that the concept of a girlfriend mom was new and the fact that I maintained my relationship with the kids and the mom was kind of unique and interesting. And it was a way for me to uh, process and it was a way for me to kind of go through what had happened and find a way to deal with it. Um, So it was cathartic in a way um it also was just what i do when traumatic things are happening in my life and i thought it would make a good story yeah i mean it, you know it's definitely a different perspective and and it does open up a lot of questions like you know like we've been having the a, a conversation mm-hmm. Um, so what then do you hope readers might take from the book and the story? The only thing I can say to that is 
had I just held, had I stayed clenched and so adamant about being an independent, child-free woman, I would not have had the experience of um, being a mother figure, mother-like figure to these two kids. I wouldn't have had the, I wouldn't have experienced the joy and I wouldn't have been able to see what it would be like. Um, so, I, I mean, I didn't know that that's something that I wanted or that I needed. I mean, I grew, I grew up with these kids. Like, I think we all grew up together. Um, and I could only say for me, um, opening, just leaving a little bit of room, just leaving a little bit of space for what might come your way. Um, cause I could have easily, I could have easily walked away at any number of points during the relationship. And for some reason, uh, I stayed because I, I think I knew deep down that this is what I needed. Yeah. And, and, you know, obviously there's, you know, definitely, um, that relationship as well. I mean, deep down, you knew this is what you needed. So you were willing to fight for it. I think your, um, your dedication says, says that nicely <laughs> because it says, oh. um, <laughs> For the two little SHITs <laughs> who slithered into my heart, I love you, you know? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Mean, just that sentence says a lot. I, I mean, I, 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 I get oh, it. Thank you. Um, well, I wasn't looking. You know, it's not like I went out looking for this. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. I, I In fact, you so... were not looking for it. You were specifically not exactly. looking for it. Exactly. But, you know, what do you do? I, I, I just kind of something was propelling me to uh, see it through, really. Yeah. As yeah. you were writing the memoir, um, and I know that writing a memoir is, is, is a bit different than just writing, you know, for yourself, because then it has to go through editing and you, you immerse yourself so more, so much more thoroughly in the writing. But did you did you have any new insights about your relationship? Um, whether with the kids or, you know, e even your relationship with yourself? Oh, sure. All of it. I thought you were going to say that I, my relationship with, with writing. And I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, well, maybe it sucks. <laughs> it's hard. It's, it's, I don't recommend it. <laughs> One star. Um, do not recommend. No, not recommend the book. Don't recommend writing. <laughs> Let's be clear. No, 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 no. I know, I know. <laughs> Yes, five I was not. No, I was, book, one star five for star, the yes. <laughs> Totally, I was not giving this a one star no. review. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. Um, oh, sure. I learned that I, I, yes, I learned a lot about myself and I learned a lot about the relation, the romantic relationship. And I learned how, um, I don't think that it's ever going to end well when people are not being true to themselves. And I tried to fit a square peg in a round hole for a lot of the relationship because I was so blindly in love and wanted this person that I put myself in a, what I thought, he, a mother role would, that I thought he expected of me and it didn't fit and it took me a while to figure that out but i did and so that's when i say once that relationship ended i was able to be the person that i wanted to be around these kids so mm -hmm. there was a lot of pretending going on and inauthentic behavior and you know when you're doing that, it just doesn't, you feel like you're wearing somebody else's clothes. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so somebody had asked me, like, well, now that you've been through this whole thing, did it change your mind about having kids? And I said, absolutely not. 
<laughs> that, yeah. that, that, that's like, I, I say that that's like your eye color. You can't really change your eye color, you know? Mm-hmm. So for me, it's not having kids is, is in my DNA. I think it's, I, I think it's biological. And, but I was in such a, um, I was in such an enviable position that I didn't have to have my own kids, but I was able to have these kids. Yeah. And without, without changing a diaper, without paying for college, like nobody had it better than me. <laughs> right. Right. As far as, you know, so yeah. Yeah. Um, talk about your title of girlfriend mom. How did that come about? Uh, well, I was trying to think of a way to, um, it started out as a blog. Like I, I, I wanted to blog about, um, what was going on because I was just failing left and right. And to me, it was just, it was all humorous. So I was trying to figure out who I was and stepmom never resonated, not only because we weren't married, but just, it was just. It just didn't um, mean anything to me. And so I, I mean, I like, I wish I could say that it was just this, um, you know, it took months to come up with the name and all this. And it really didn't. I was a girlfriend and I was a part-time mom, mom-ish. So mm-hmm. I, girlfriend, mom, it just seemed obvious to me. And uh, so that's how that came about. It was just very like trying to figure out who I was. Let's go ahead and take our second break of the podcast. And when we come back, we will talk about a holiday that you have maybe never heard of before, not been aware of before. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Danny Alpert about her memoir, The Girlfriend Mom. And I love that you have now created Girlfriend Mom Day so you can have a day to celebrate oh, with, with the kids. That's awesome. Yes. Are there cards for that yet? Um, I'm going to have to work on that. I'm going to have to work on the <laughs> cards um, because, you know, I'm not the only one out there. No, you know, so so I think um, sure. Why not celebrate it? Absolutely. I, you yeah. Know, that if you, we can have holidays for, you know, International Ice Cream Day, International, you know, Collection Rock know. Day. There's holidays for everything. Where will that end? <laughs> I don't think it will. <laughs> oh my God! It's like I think people are up late at night trying to think of a new national holiday. Maybe they don't. <laughs> Right. What do the kids, I mean, they're not, they're not kids anymore, but they'll always be your kids. Uh, what do they think of yeah. the book? Um, the daughter who is now 26 loves it. And the, uh, her brother who is 21, uh, hasn't read it. <laughs> and I don't think he will read it. 
he's not a big read. He's not a big reader, and I just don't think it's not that I want to uh, cancel anyone out, but I don't think a twenty-year-old boy is really my my audience. Right. Right. Because I don't think that's my demographic. But <laughs> target, I think, yeah. I think maybe when I think maybe when he's older, he might be curious. But you've discussed the fact that obviously he knows you wrote a book, right, and that he's in it. <laughs> I oh mean, yes, he knows. He knows I wrote the book. He knows he's in it, and he knows from other people telling him that I got his character down pretty well. You mentioned writing a blog, and I know you've written articles as well. Are there any of those writings that you would like to highlight or or talk about? Oh, um, I'm my stuff is kind of all over the the internet, but I did. Um, there's a uh, an adaptation of the girlfriend mom, uh, or more of a summary for those that like the notes. Um, that was just um, published on Medium.com, uh, which gives you a nice, uh, I guess, a, yeah, a summary of of the book. And then there's also a um, fairly lengthy. Uh, but I, but very close to my heart, piece on um, Norman Lear, uh, the television producer, uh, who was just 98 a few weeks ago. Um, that's also on Medium as well. And then all my stuff is on my website. Thank you. And are yeah. you, what, what are you working on now? That could be, are you working on another book? Are you working on articles? Are you working on, I don't know, building a house out of Legos? <laughs> what are you doing these I, days during COVID? Well, well, first of all, I'm trying to uh, getting out of bed. Let's just start with that. Um, yep. <laughs> and then if I could manage that, um, I'm working on two, two uh, books right now. One is about my, um, it's called An American Broad Abroad, The Tragically True Misadventures of a Woman on the Run from Los Angeles and Herself. Um, and it'll, my travel stories. And then when I could see my way to it, uh, the ex-girlfriend mom will be the follow-up book. Ah, uh, yes. I was going to ask about the to be continued at the end of this book. So that is exactly. Right. Nice. So I think that will focus. And yeah, that'll focus more on my relationship with the um, ex-wife and uh, the kids and me mm -hmm. as adults. Right. You know how right. we where where we are now kind of thing yeah although just those two brief uh little um anecdotes you told at the beginning makes me want to read the travel one as well so, <laughs> so oh, keep yeah. writing that get, get that out so we can all find out more I'm about your adventures as, i'm going as fast as misadventures i'm going as, <laughs> I'm typing as fast as i can type type even faster oh, no. um, it, it's so hard in this climate Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, everything is weird. I know in the book you talk about your desire to be in the entertainment field more as an actor than a writer. But um, is writing something that you also always kind of wanted to do, or did that come to you later in life as you kind of navigated your way through things? I think um, writing came from not having any success as a performer. So instead of sitting around and waiting, I just decided, I just started writing my own stuff. So I wrote a couple of one-person shows. I wrote a short film, which is on YouTube. Um, and I wrote, I did stand-up comedy for a while. So it was really a way for me to make, continue to make things and be creative and get my yayas out. And then writing this book, you know, it's just a sort of natural evolution, I guess. Sure. And um, through that experience, do you have advice for other people who maybe are thinking of writing a memoir? Oh, gosh, <laughs> I'm in no position to give advice. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, no. I would read, yeah, I'd re I would read memoirs, but I'd, al I'd also, um, and I didn't, but I think reading, um, I think reading novels 
would be very helpful, even though you're writing a memoir. Um, and I would also wait if you're doing, if you're writing about a specific uh, place in time. I would, I think I started too soon after the breakup. I didn't give, I don't think I let it enough time pass. And so mm-hmm. I was still really in the thick of it, in the heartbreak when I was writing. So it took me, it took me a little bit longer to write it because I kind of had to mourn and grieve while I'm writing. And, and it just took, it just took a lot longer. So um, I probably would have waited a little bit more to get a little bit more objectivity. But no, sure. I have no advice. I mean, <laughs> if you must, my feeling is if you must do it, do it. But if you could find something else to do, <laughs> I, might, <laughs> do that I might do that. My problem is I haven't found anything else I could do. Believe me, I look. I went to Prague. I went to Prague. That didn't work. I, I became a, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's well, not like I'm not trying. Haven't tried. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, That's my point. Right. You mentioned novels. When so, when you take the time to read for yourself, uh, do you have favorite authors or genres that you gravitate toward? Um, I don't think so. I think it's. I mean, I obviously I lean more towards humor, um, just as a distraction, if nothing else. And I just love to laugh. Um, I'm in the middle, though, of reading uh, Stacey Abrams' Our Time Is Now, uh, which is both <laughs> which is both depressing and um, enlightening. Uh, so I'm kind of all over the place. I mean, I'll just read. I'll read it. I, I don't read sci-fi. I don't read. Uh, I I don't read a lot of um, novels. Um, just not where my head's at these days. I I think um, humorous and no wait, what did you say? Depressing and enlightening could be the yeah. uh, the, the the motto for 2020. I know, right? <laughs> and it's yeah. very hard to ca- It's very hard to carry both of those. Yeah, like I, you know, because uh, it's such a it's such a roller coaster ride. Yeah, like emotion emotionally. So my feeling is, I just need to find I need to find the humor in 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 anything that I possibly can because I think it's I think it's the only way to cope. For me, I should just talk talk about me. <laughs> um, but as my boyfriend Norman Lear says, he's lived to 90, he's lived to ninety eight because he spent most, if not all, of his life laughing. Nice. So, do not underestimate the power of humor. Agreed. <laughs> you mentioned your website, so if you could tell people the how to find your website and where they might be able to find you on social media. Sure. My website is dannyalpert.com or you could go to thegirlfriendmom.com. It'll get you, it'll get you to the same place. Um, Instagram is danny underscore alpert and I'm on Facebook and I'm all over the place. I'm out there. I, I assume we can probably find not only your writings on your website, but also your social media. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, sure. Yeah. And the book is found wherever I'm actually in the process of um, recording the audio book. Um, but the the uh, the sounds like the electronic, the digital. <laughs> right. I'm so, I'm so tech, tech, technologically savvy. Um, the uh, digital and paperback you can find wherever you get those. Uh, yeah, wherever you buy your books. Yes. All right. Sounds great. So we've talked about... That was a horrible sales pitch. Yeah. (laughs) Please get me out of here. What? (laughs) Um, Why did I just suddenly picture pulling you off stage with a big shepherd's crick? Where did that even come from? (laughs) Oh, my God. Because most of the time, that's what was needed. Get her off. Oh, my goodness. Um, Yeah. we've, We've talked about 
um, <laughs> several different topics today. Is, is there anything though that we haven't covered that you would like for people to know about the book or um, just anything that we haven't covered? Um, no, I think, um, I think, uh, I think we hit, hit all of the, uh, the marks. I do believe that the book is a nice example of escapism. It's an easy, fun, and funny read. And I think it, it I, I think it will, um, incite conversation about family and motherhood mm -hmm. and what it all means. And, yeah, and parenting roles yeah. in general. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or just oh, a right. laugh. Or just a Exa laugh. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, you know, it deals with some, it deals with some, some heavier topics just because it does deal with, you know, parenting and co-parenting and relationships. Sure. But it's done in, like you said, it's, it's more of a lighter read. It's not going to, <laughs> it's not going to make you just want to lay on the floor and stare at the ceiling and moan for the, the no, impression I've, of it all. I've, nope. I've, I've done that for you. So you don't have to do it. <laughs> Thanks. I've, we appreciate I've you taking one you. for the team. Yes, I did. And I, and I'm, I'll tell you about it, but you don't have to do it yourself. I'm not putting you in harm's way. Appreciated it. Appreciated it. <laughs> Appreciated it. Hey, you know See? what? I think we should wrap this up because neither of us can speak in full sentences anymore. Oh, my God. <laughs> Terrible. So I wanna, Terrible. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me about your new memoir, The Girlfriend Mom. It has been my pleasure. Thank you once again to Danny for joining me to talk about her memoir, The Girlfriend Mom. I had such fun talking with her. She is really fun to talk to. And I definitely encourage you to uh, check out her memoir, The Girlfriend Mom. And if you are interested in reading, A, a funny story, B, um, a heartwarming and loving story, C, a story that depicts relationships in a way that you maybe haven't thought of, or maybe you have experienced a similar situation and you... I don't know. It was, it was, it was a good situation. It was a bad situation. It was a mediocre situation. I don't know your life, but maybe you would like to pick up this memoir to see how someone else navigated those waters. Maybe you're in, in a similar situation right now. Check out The Girlfriend Mom. I promise you, you will not regret it. It is very enjoyable and it is a, it's, like I said, it's a lighthearted read. It will make you feel better at the end of the day. And we can all use that in this uh, day and age, in the, the year of 2020, where everything is weird. Every day, weird. <laughs> so, as always, if you enjoyed this podcast, please, please, please do us the favor of, do us the royal us. I don't know. I always say that. Do me, do the podcast, do the network. I guess the network could be us. Do us the network the favor of writing a nice review or giving a five-star review. Those really help us out to get the podcast out to more book lovers like yourselves. Also, follow us on social media, GSMC Book Review. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I hope that you have enjoyed this interview, and I hope that you will join me for the next interview when I will be speaking with Sarah Summers about another memoir. This one on a very different subject than the one we talked about today. Uh, Sarah's memoir is about food addiction, her lifelong struggle with food addiction, how she came to terms with that addiction and worked through it, came out the other side. So join me for that interview with Sarah Summers. In the meantime, hope you're having a wonderful day. Hope that things aren't too weird in this weird year of 2020. And I definitely hope Hope that your day brings you plenty of time to get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www. 
gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program. Thank you.